One way or another, we've come this far, but who will make it to Challengers? Welcome back all to the VCT NA Challengers Open Qualifier. Tenrek and Marks here to bring you through the third of four qualifying matches to see who are our new candidates for VCL 2024. Marks, you just got to see Leet take down Nightblood Gaming and uh, their path is not done yet. In fact, it's just about to start back up again. How are you feeling about this upcoming game? This is going to be really interesting. I mean, obviously, too, we're in the loser's bracket just regardless. So every single match is going to be an elimination match. But what makes the current stage of the tournament even more exciting is that one of these teams will be able to secure their spot on challengers to get this far and be so close to getting that. Like, you know that both these teams have got to be feeling a little bit nervous, but they're going to be bringing in the best that they've got into this next matchup. For sure, and it comes after so much hard work from both of these teams, all four of the ones that are remaining. In fact, of course, we'll be starting out these qualifying matches with the Glazers taking on Lee, and then we'll head down to Winthrop taking on Thinking Men. Uh, like like you said, we just got to see Lee take down Nightblood in that loser's bracket. Glazers, of course, came down from the winners after losing to YFP in their qualification match, so this is their second uh, final <laughs> opportunity at, uh, at the door, and it is really the final opportunity here in that tournament. Like you said, uh, if, if whoever loses this will have to wait until OQ2 to get another shot at qualifying. And that means you got to start the whole dang bracket over again. Yeah, and on top of that too, like to get this close, you know that the nerves are going to play a little bit of a factor into here. But yeah, the matchup, the match that we are going to be covering, we're going to be following Leet into this next one, going up against the Glazers. Leet, kind of a little bit more of an unknown squad coming into this one and honestly really impressing me with how they've been playing things. But the Glazers, these guys, I mean, they've been around the circuit multiple times and they are so close. Once again, like you said, second opportunity to potentially secure their spot in the Challengers. For sure, yeah. I, the Glazers put a, a really solid performance up against YFP. They really fought tooth and nail to the bitter end, but of course YFP able to take them over. YFP was actually the team that also sent Leet down into the loser's bracket, so that was an initial litmus, but not only that, Leet has now also beaten Nightblood, which uh, the Glazers just so happened to two earlier in the bracket as well. So we have two baselines to work off of, both with conflicting storylines, because while the Glazers managed to get more rounds on YFP, Leet beat Nightblood with far more more comfort. So, Marks, this is quite the uncertain match, and it comes from a lot of variability in performance. Leet looked especially comfortable this match, despite their uh, look uh, like comfy-looking Cinderella run up till this point. Pretty solid maps, pretty solid score lines. Uh, they have looked so electric this time around today. And car, 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 car. <laughs> yeah, it's not a car. It's just, just so humble. Just so amazing. Just just the best person out there. That's kind of what I've learned off of the last match there. But honestly, just, okay, jokes aside, Sunday Car has been having a phenomenal performance. And one of these other factors that might be coming into this is we are getting Leet just off of a last matchup. So in theory, they might be a little bit more warm coming into this one, or they might be a little bit burnt out. And I'm wondering how that might contribute to this. So multiple factors kind of plugging into this matchup to make it even more exciting. And uh, you know what? I'm so curious to see how this one plays out Leet, they don't use flashes which <laughs> is crazy it's it, it's valorant tenrek you gotta use flashes but Leet have now 2 0 their way through without basically using a flash agent in, in any map except for i think ascent yeah uh, their entries have been uh, very piecemeal but have somehow worked out uh, the aim diffing has been crazy the timing from these players has been absolutely incredible which is weird because uh, you would think that longevity is a huge factor for these teams as well this lead squad is, is not exactly like early to the party or anything. They like just reformed a couple tournaments ago and have still just try, uh, been trying to like crank things out. Um, and while they have had really good records, in fact, the three of the four teams that they've lost to in their entire history are teams that qualified for challengers already. Um, this uh, they, they, they look really, really solid. That being said, longevity is a factor for the Glazers who have been together since August of last year. These guys have been working and fighting tooth and nail in the off season, make an impact and this is the farthest that they've come. Even making it all the way through that winner's bracket is an achievement in itself. Losing to YFP is not exactly a like, oh my God, they've choked so hard, it's so Jover for them moment. Um, but here, losing to Leet, uh, it's going to be back to the drawing board if they can't get it done here. 
it, it's so funny to me because one of the things that we've just kind of assumed at this point is that YFP, like since they qualified, it's okay if you've lost a YFP. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it is very competitive between these two teams and what we're going to be able to finally see which maps we're going to be going to for this entire matchup. Once again, challengers entry on the line. We're going to be starting things out onto Icebox, moving things over to Breeze. And if we need that last map, we're going to be seeing Lotus yet again. Split and Ascent are those insta-bans for either of these squads. We actually haven't seen Lotus get brought out by, I believe, Leet or Glazers so far this tournament, so that's an interesting third pick, but Icebox and Breeze, not super out of the ordinary for either of them. Uh, like you said, Leet gonna be able to get that first pick on Icebox. Glazers have elected to start out on the attack. That is nothing new for them. Uh, their attacking rounds on Icebox look really solid so far with their double initiator core. The the, the KO uh, in particular has been making uh, uh, the rounds quite a bit here from Precision. And uh, he's been he's been really letting it talk uh, on this map. And so I'm excited to see how they'll be able to, to work both of these lanes because when we see Saw, or when I got to see them last night or last night up against YFP, um, they really got stunted in the later rounds of that attack when it became a bit, a bit too replicable. I hope they bring some new stuff to the table. And, and once again, speaking of replicable, I mean, we already know what composition <laughs> we're going to be seeing Leak come into Icebox with, and that's going to be our triple Sentinel composition. Uh, Son of Car probably going to be playing the chamber again. Killjoy, Sage, Sova, and a Viper. It's... I call it a little bit of a glass cannon because you put a lot of emphasis on Son of Car being able to find those hits and not really having many backup options if some of those key members do go down. But it, it, it's unconventional, but so far they've made it work and that is the only composition they've been running in this entire tournament onto Icebox. The question is, is you know, you talk double initiators coming in, that's a lot more flashes, a lot more stuff that could really allow for better engagements coming in from the Glazers. And I'm, I'm really wondering, I feel like this is really going to push Leet in that composition and how well it can really play. It's true. So far, so good for a, for a cargo kill meta, but uh, uh, there is still so much more to get through. The Glazer is this final hurdle for a team that, again, has uh, has really come out of the woodwork in the past month or two, and this tournament has made such an impact. But the Glazers have, too. Both these teams very deserving of a challenger spot. Hell, both of them might get it in the bitter end, but here, <laughs> only one can. Uh, I, I, I have to ask you with complete honesty, Marks, do you have a favorite coming into this match, even this first map. You know, when it when it comes down to it, I, I think I want to give the edge to the Glazers. I was watching the stream yesterday, and I think that they do bring a little bit more into their play style. I think that they're a little bit more adaptive, a little bit more flexible. And, you know, I talk about the exact same strategy that Lead has been kind of pulling out compositionally, and it has been working. And, you know, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Why reinvent the wheel when it's running perfectly? But at the same time, like that longevity, I don't think that that works in the grand long scheme of things. Of course, willing to be proven wrong, always willing to be proven wrong. But I think that the Glazers coming in with a little bit more flexibility in their play style. They've got more utility to kind of help win them out. If they just play a little bit more intelligently than Leet, I definitely think they should be able to squeeze this out. I mean, th this push will be the ultimate test for Leet's defense with that triple sentinel core, right? As Drone is on that raise and you have that double initiator, the door is always wide open for a double a blast pack wide swing for this kid. He is always up in your face. He is always trying to get that burst blood. And most of the time, he succeeds. But with that triple sentinel, with a uh, car just watching down a, a sight line for free, I guess, uh, you know, it it's a big test to see if Leet can kind of defy the odds of Icebox defense and rather than kind of, uh, you know, keep the opponents guessing, force them to re consider, you know, uh, you know, try to just slow momentum, you know, can you get them to a full stop? Can you actually grind an icebox attack to a halt? We will find out right out the gate. Glazers on attack, lead on defense, and looky-loo here, we see that triple sentinel core coming out for 1337. It is the exact same on both sides. And so what we can expect from Leet here is actually pretty standard. Uh, as soon as they're going to be engaging on any attack, you're going to see the barrier orb get tossed up in order to secure a very clean plant. But of course, on the defense, using that barrier orb to really control some of the channels that are going to be available for the Glazers. What I am most interested in right now is the fact that they are bringing in the KO. 
I think that mm -hmm. especially too with a very heavy utility. I mean, you know, we talk about Leet not really needing their utility to engage, but they do play off of it for more information or to slow things down to get themselves into position. If that zero point lands pretty well, that might open things up where they those narrow escape routes where they try to back out. The Glazers might just be able to pounce on them. And so I'm really worried to see how that might kind of shake out. Yeah, Precision's gonna be a really pivotal player for uh, this entire game. Not only is Fragment a more viable way to flush opponents out of the cubbies than the Nano Swarm usually is, which is what teams normally go with, you're now able to save those Nano Swarms for the post plant more effectively as well, but the Zero Point has been able to use, be used a lot more reactively from these long range plays. When you see an ultimate come out, or you see these early starts, Precision is gonna be able to just kind of, again, play for that spacing, play to give Glazers a little more breathing room immediately. Um, and and so uh, I'm wondering which which, uh, which player Leet is going to put a target on first. I imagine it would be Precision, but again, just like last time we saw Glazers play, I also wouldn't be surprised if Ange was on the chopping block first. Oftentimes a <laughs> mid-holder, oftentimes the screen setup, and oftentimes in the middle of the pack rather than the back. You never put Ange on flank watch, you never put Ange in, you know, on, on the front of things, but they are always around. And uh, this time it looks like they'll have the early lurk from the mid watch with the help of that uh, toxic orb as Glazers will start their attack on the A side, try and take that high ground, but yeah, is already barrier orbed up to the scaffolding and is going to dance around. Drones shots are better, though, and they will get the first blood. Yeah, that was very typical of what you expect out of Leet. A little bit different this time. Using the barrier orb more offensively than trying to zone things out and still unfortunately not able to get those kills. That's kind of what they bank on on their defensive sides. They want to try and, you know, take their opponent by surprise, yeah. find a pick and then back off, just like I've been saying, but... Not able to do so this time, so we end in a little bit of a stalemate. Everything is just silent in no man's land, as I imagine the Glazers are just going to be waiting for a little bit of that utility to come back online before they decide to engage. Speaking of which, first knife. Gonna make sure no one's in the immediate vicinity. Car gonna try and find an opening shot. Little TP back in. Still a very packed defense for Elite here, but big flash is gonna open up the site. Glazer should be able to take care of this no problem with just fireball ops Fire left planted. in the 3v1 as Glazers can pretty conventionally just head back to entrance here, but Zachary's actually going to play quite close, and Riku is looking for the long shot. That's nothing new. Ange will uh, finally make that lurk work after fireball will open things up in the ditto, and Glazers will keep three stable for round one. Yeah, fantastic showing from the Glazers. I mean, it was just patience there. They slowed things down, waited for a good opportunity. And quite frankly, that was something that I was kind of missing from the attack side of uh, Leet. They don't really have that forward momentum, that forward engagement, that kind of drone added that pressure onto. You can see as soon as the Rays flies in onto the site, Leet, they're looking up, they're looking down, they're looking sideways because the rest of the Glazers are just kind of following behind. So just a very clean, simple execute, but they just overwhelm all of the members on the site. And, well, once again, Leet, they might be going for a little bit of shenanigans, but a lot of information already just gained by a Sova and a KO. I mean, Glazers may be a little taken aback by how much presence is immediately on the front line, but uh, it's a good proactive play, again, from, from Precision, just to scope out if Lead is going for that aggression. They know that is always an option when it comes to this team, and Carr is just going to keep searching. Ange on the outlaw will spot the second fireball. We'll avoid the pot shot for now, and on half health, we'll have to take a bit of a backseat on the rest of this flank watch. In fact, Riku's going to come help out. And watch mid as well. Leet have no clean entry, but Glazers still have yet to get on site. They don't know how much is on this site at the moment. Three seconds till knife. Does Precision toss this out immediately? No. The Recon Bolt going to get shot down. Guarantee that Glazers at least have this space guaranteed. Hell cleared away as well. Spike planted on default. Car is going to be able to pop down drone though. And so Leet can at least take back Heaven immediately. Fireball gonna watch for Riku from mid. Little bit of a dance here, and you're not watching. Riku's not landing. There are shots, though! And Leet have a chance. More than a chance. They have the sight, too. Zachary's gotta spray it down. Keep the lineup going, but running out of bullets has to switch back to the Ghost, and he's the only one left, but it matters not. It took way too much, but it got the job done. Glazer's 2-0. Oh my, see, okay, when we talk about Lee and their defensive style, that is exactly what I expect from this squad. Just a bunch of people just running it down, throwing their bodies at their opponents, and just outgunning them with the pure number of bullets that could potentially fly, but Zachary with the Bulldog swaps over, finds a nice little foreplay to close down the round, now one ultimate orb away from getting the Hunter's Fury online as well. 
excellently played by the Glazers. Lee, they will be able to buy up this time, but so far their strategy hasn't been getting as much value as they want. They're definitely trying it. And well, on top of that too, this initiator stuff has made it so much more difficult for Lee to be able to take their foothold, move out forwards like they usually do. And as a result, the Glazers just feel like they are controlling the tempo of this map. Only two rounds in, but already you can see these styles kind of clashing against each other. Yeah, feels like one of those uh, one of those physics toys with the like the, the the Newton. I forget what it's called, but it's like the little marble balls that you like you hit you you Newton's lift one cradle? up. Yeah, Newton's cradle. Like you lift <laughs> one up and then it hits the other one on the other end. It feels yeah. like for this game right now, you've taken both ends of that and just let them collapse into each other rather than <laughs> just let one hit because it, it's not necessarily Leet using their util to trade back for Glazers. It's Leet using their util proactively to maybe get some aggression and then begging for Glazers to burn all of theirs, which I guess is kind of working because they don't have to check as many sight lines immediately, but uh, it doesn't work for the long run. I'm not entirely sure yet. Glazers will find a sight. Very, very slow push. Dry as well. Well done to at least take sight. Leader Comfy playing from here, though. They want to make sure that Glazers are working with little to nothing. Car, though. And we go. And wow. From Maps, able to somehow find this spray control on the road to three. Do we just grab one immediately? No. Yeji's going to do the rest of the legwork, but Leet make it look easy. A flawless bonus. That's just unbelievable stuff that I've seen from Son of Car. I believe. I believe. I mean, I was going to say, I, you know, this is very standard stuff from Lee. They hang back, they wait, they get everyone regrouped, and then they just kind of push in together. Uh, but you know what? They don't even really need to push in that much if Son of Car is able to just find a 3K right out the front door. Oh, the spray control. So fantastic. That's nice. Going down as well. And then the rest of the squad, they just swarm in onto the site. And it's nice and clean. Already two of the horse online. Six kills already. And now Leap, they find their first round. But Glazers are going to be right back into things. They've got full rifles moving into this next one. As well, Zachary has that Hunter's Fury. I wonder this time, though, if Leap are going to actually try and push forwards. And, well, two of the horse is going to be already active. You can tell, Car's trying to activate cruise control round four. <laughs> and it might work. Let's just keep going. <laughs> I mean, Glazers here, you are so dead, and they immediately move over to B-Long, which has stayed untouched so far. And for good reason. I, I mean, Momiji and Fireball are a great combo for this leg hold, and uh, the double initiator is not nearly as powerful here. Knife cannot clear as much space. And I mean, Zachary, all you can really do is play Hunter's Fury for post plants, so it comes really down to if Drone and Riku can kind of cut you, cut this open. And it's difficult to when Mamiji is not cleared. When do we peek this? Here. Here. They know, but this is the thing I love about this Killjoy setup. It should slow them down just enough where it'll allow the rest of the squad to be able to make their way over in time. Mamiji just in an excellent position, but gets traded back. Oh no! It all fell down. Tell okay. what happened there. Some crazy discipline and uh, some good soft rotation coming from Leet to, to immediately react to this push. Glazers have been forced to slow down because they don't want to waste everything at once, and it leads to Leet actually being able to find a response before they even have to fire back. And by that point, I mean, they found the positions anyway. Uh, and that's most everything gone for Glazers. They'll have to half-heartedly buy into this round. Leet trying to get the setup early on. I mean, this alt cycle is en route. Yeji one away from the res. Fireball two down from the lockdown. They both seem to want to take the front line to actually farm those, those orbs. And Lee is even comfortable starting to take mid pedestal, which you almost never see teams do right now in OQ. Yeah, it's something else. And look at that. Toss down the snake bite. Completely just clear out the angle as well. I think that uh, this time around, Lee, they understood based on Nightblood Gaming that mid control was kind of their biggest weakness. And it seems like they're doing a little bit more just to be able to reinforce it. I would also like to mention they completely rotated their squad around. Defense not really emphasizing A, despite the fact that the first four heavy emphasis onto the A site for that defense. They didn't allow the Glazers to get any room. This time they just willingly give it up because they're barely confident that given the rifle advantage, given the fact that Son of Car is kind of popping off right now, they should be able to retake things pretty easily. Yeah, they'll definitely watch from the wings here. Let Glazers get their Owl Drone out. Get your second recon done. Make sure Heaven's clear. 
Yes, Glazers, they say in unison. <laughs> oh, combo is so good! Oh my god! That's not planted! That's three ricocheted pieces of util for frag. I I mean, that's the that, that's the type that leads on and oh here comes the swing. Now Mamiji's on the tear. No ace yet again. Everyone else is just so on it. Car wants another though. He's gonna have a lot of trouble finding it. Temporary nerf to the goat, I guess. And uh, Elite will now take the lead pretty succinctly. <laughs> the son of Car lore is just rapidly expanding. <laughs> this is going on. I'm all for it. Uh, this is something interesting that I actually want to comment on, uh, specifically about the play style that we see of Elite, because, you know, previously they have been more just taking the neutral gunfight, winning it out. That's how they win things, right? But when they use their utility, it comes in like a storm. <laughs> and I think that that last round did a fantastic job of demonstrating it. It is kind of like a little bit of a risky play if you think about it, just because you kind of just use everything there. But when it works out, it's fantastic. It completely just flushes someone out, can even find the kill and gives more time for the rest of the squad to regroup themselves to try and go for that neutral uh, attack. I, I gotta say, I think when it comes down to it, Leet, they're just heavily relaying, relying on their coordination, just pure gunfight wins to be able to carry them through these rounds. You so strange, because Glazer's, uh, Glazer's ability to pack in was really good previously for their icebox attacks. Felt so much more capable on B before, but here with, with these constant mid chokes, they've had to lean so much more heavier on a main begging for this high ground to just be handed over by the sentinels and i mean all too often it is simply because leet's willing to play for it later oh nice peek from drone though that'll open up sight planted but it's b that we finally leaned on and now comes the viper's pit and riku from the grave be able to take at least three with him son of car entering early on and Anja's just gonna spray through to find it and so restabilization from the glazers holding on to some good guns in the process, and I, I think that just goes to show how much Glazers have to change to uh, to adapt to such a, a an unorthodox team like Leet. The 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 split pushes, the eccentric hesitation that we do not tend to see from this team on this attack. No. Uh, uh, but it seems like they're starting to get their finger on the pulse a little bit. Yeah, and that's one of the weaknesses that I've noticed from Leet so far. When it comes to these kind of you know, brain plays that we're gonna see, strategies to try and flesh people out and all that type of stuff. It just kind of doesn't work out well for Lee. If the Glazers continue to confuse them, continue to throw curveballs at them, they're gonna be very easy, easily able to isolate them. I mean, even on that last map, you can tell it was just to pick off one by one by one, just dwindle their numbers down and then suddenly Son of Car can't carry the world on his back completely. But they have to play that a little bit more carefully. A barrel spotted, but Son of Car drops down. A little bit of aggression coming Here. in from Leet this time. Here. Yeah, Car is very willing to hold this now. Especially now that the drone's gone. Not even. I mean, they're not even worried about the knife at the moment. Precision <laughs> doesn't want to toss it from here. It's too spooky. There it is. It'll give Car away, but now they just know. I really don't want to walk into this. I want to play for the distance. I want to play for the for the diversion. And it's up too, where Ange is going to be able to find Fireball to open things up. Riku, great. Double back to make sure that this is fully clear. And it looks like Lasers have the read, but do they have the kills to back it up? Riku, who has been upping on the KJ pretty consistently so far here on Icebox, is a little worse for wear after finding the first. Has to peek back on Yeji, who does still have this res. Very much anybody's round at the moment, but it is Glazer's sight yet again, and they've taken far more than just entry. And this is the thing too, given the fact that, you know, the three Sentinels are left alive, there's not a ton of stuff they can do on this engagement, so it's going to be pretty difficult for them. Look at that, they're just making UG just kind of anchor things down. Lockdown's being tossed out yeah, from baby. sides. 3v3. 3v4, sorry. Punch in the air, but it's Son of Car that dips on the op first. Everybody out! A scatter shot of ultimates, and it's Zachary who will let it fly onto Spike next. He's still holding this in the pocket, and with the rest gone, Carr understands that he needs to hold on to this operator to give Leap that extra propulsion in the next couple rounds. And so it is Glazers who will take this back, and they don't exactly look comfortable, but they look different, and that's what matters. Yeah, once again, this is what I was commenting on in the start of the map. I think that the level of flexibility they're coming into this, 
That is going to be what's going to be able to help them win this map pick here. <laughs> Riku with the Operator. Wasn't expecting this one to show up as much as it did on the last round, but it was fantastic. Uh, two ultimates get invested by the Glazers, but they're more than happy with that just to make sure that they don't allow the elite economy to continue to grow. And on top of that, too, they were at least able to trade out that Killjoy lockdown. However, Momiji does have the Viper's Pit available. We've seen it used a little bit more based on when they want to retake the site, so I wouldn't expect it right off the bat, but the Glazers, they get set up yet again to go down A. The Recon Bolt is going to get not enough information, but a showstopper on the entry. And Drone is searching. This is, he feels in his element at the moment. Knife tossed out just to guarantee the position, and Drone will spot Momiji. A little more than that as well, understands this Heaven Presence, and so how long can you hold it? We'll spot Fireball, good amount of damage done as well. But Glazers do not have the Devol guaranteed. They'll have to plant on the high ground. Looks like Zachary has found it. Look at this huge flank from Leap, though. Two Sentinels from the back <laughs> end that Ange is paying pretty good attention to. Who is watching Tube? Why would you? I, I mean, there's so much in your way, but the timing for Ange's sights doesn't spot a thing. Precision makes the call out. Ange, where are you? Please, watch. But Pyro, the first defusal, the first spray, a little bit of damage done, enough to get him out. And Fireball has to hold close in order to make this work. Literally one shot, two. I think this is a done deal. Yeah, just has to hold this from half. And it's an easy double swing for Glazers to finalize. They continue to remain stable and will grab a two round lead now. Yeah, a very cheeky little flank trying to be set up there by Lee. I mean, they go back there and then shifts in the night. They just completely pass each other by. But at the same time, the information gets given over and then it completely gets shut down. And they were really banking on that flank to add additional pressure for the Glazers to make them try and spin around, try to get them a little bit more confused, but not going to be the case. And then the Glazers can just look forward at the members of Lee just one by one stumbling in onto the spike trying to make sure that they get that defuse, but not going to beat the case in Leet. They call for a timeout. Tenrek, Leet is on the defense. They've got three Sentinels. They've looked more confident on the defensive half. And right now, the Glazers, they're just kind of blazing the way forward. Yeah, cargo kill meta doesn't really work out when car has to stay. And <laughs> unfortunately, that's kind of been the MO for, uh, for this Glazer squad. It's just... Forcing the reposition, forcing the stick um, with the split push, and, and just always having someone in mid at this stage, which, again, we didn't even see yesterday. Um, I'm, I'm very astounded by, by how quickly Glazers have kind of put the pressure back on here and are diffing even in the angles in which Leet was just unstoppable in the previous yeah. match already. Like night and day here. You're in the qualification match. This is for all those, all, every single marble. Yeah. And... and uh, uh, Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 no. That you, you go. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, given the fact that they just saw me play Icebox, I think that the Glazers have a little bit of a better idea on how they the squad might be playing, and you can see that you know the level of adaptation that you're talking about. Uh, some of that was being read pretty early on, which to me shows that the homework has been done. Pyro uses the Hunter Fury right off the bat. You can tell that Leet knows what, you know, the Glazers is capable of as well. They understand how much control they have of, uh, of the back half of the map. They know that the Glazers are far weaker there. Snowman, 100% theirs. Heaven, 100% theirs. Glazers cannot watch it too efficiently. But, I mean, once you duck back in a box, you have to play for the distance. And Leet is definitely pretty good at that. That's what the Triple Sentinel is there for. But this plant is still so dang hard. Barrier tossed up by Yeji quite early on, which means you have to swing around it in order to make this work. Precision is just going to dive right in, though. Glazers are going to give themselves over, and it's going to lead to Blue all over that kill feed lead. Make it a 4v1, and Carr will get the final kill, making it a 4-5 game. They're so devastating when they can actually play together. It, it blows my mind how consistent Leet are on their retakes. And it, it almost goes to show just how willing they are to give up a site as long as they can keep their members alive. Because every single, it almost feels like Tenrek, they spend a majority of their time just practicing retakes and almost nothing else. <laughs> it's I so mean, clean. It, it, it's, 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 it's what asks you to be the most mechanically capable, and w when you look at Leet as a squad, as a whole, uh, their mechanics are so clean. Their crossfires are yeah. nuts. Their timing is absolutely insane. I mean, uh, the wide swings I'm seeing from these guys, they don't even feel wide because their, TO, uh, their, their TTK is just so dang quick. 
Yeah, it's once again like fantastic coming between them. And this is a fairly new squad to mm-hmm. see that level of just like coordination and stuff. Like, <laughs> obviously, there's a lot of trust. Might... Like, it, it takes yeah. so much trust. 100%. Precision already finds a kill right off the bat, and this is where the dominoes start to crumble for Leet. Uh, Pyro able to at least get one, but the Glazers, they've got the numbers advantage now. Leet's, uh, Elite's trying to take too much at a time. Spread far too thin. Way too much to watch. And Glazers are happy to take advantage of that. As long as they continue to slightly switch up what they do. And uh, in that case, it's Glazers overextending all the way back over to Pedestal, where Ange will once again find this Lurk, and they have particularly excelled at that thus far. Now 6-4 here, as Glazers are the ones that are able to hold on to quite a bit this time around. I think that's the first round they've won with 4 up. Yeah, I mean, this is this is the one thing about the way that Leet has played these maps previously. Uh, it's very much just kind of the same thing over and over and over again. And once you start to become a little bit wiser to it, that it's very easy to counter that. And I, I think we're seeing that play to a T right now by the Glazers. I wouldn't even say that it's necessarily like, you know, fancy flicks, good gunplay, all of that type of stuff. I think at this point, they're just so tuned in to what Leet want to be doing that when they force Leet to not do that, they just look uncomfortable. We're not seeing Leet go for those aggressive defensive pushes anymore. And if they're not able to get that value, Poison's they off. kind of fall apart. They can't even get set up from their post plants. So they've got to stay more stalwart in the opening, and that's a good way to do it. Fireball, early peak. Okay. Mamiji on the run back is still checking their tail. But Ange, yet again, the lurk, and is going to diff Yeji and Car. Now Fireball having to watch, and yet again, Leet, they have to spread themselves out. The resources are just not there when you have the double sentinel up. And now you just have the single for this V-side hold. Uh, you can't even hold from Snowman that effectively. And yet, Glazers, they're still going to take all the time in the world Fucking to come out onto yeah. site here. In fact, they might consider the rotation. Leet's considering it, too. And with 45 seconds to go, every reason to do so. Toxic screen going to well, expire. Leet's just... Ooh, Leet just hard. wants to let this play out. And yeah, Glazers, there, there's a reason for that. The Viper Spit is up, and Ange is more than happy to throw that into the ring. Pyro the jump peek into Snowman. So now your Viper is distracted and quite low. And Wait, the what? flash is not enough. There's two back there. Viper's pit gone. Viper gone. And Fireball is lighting it up. A 3k for the KJ. And Leet turn it all around instantly. Last round in the that, I, I'm, I'm just going to say it. I think that that was a little bit of a misplay coming in from the Glazers. A little bit. The fact that they dropped down the Viper's pit. They still have two flashes and a molly available for precision. They should have been able to very securely take that round, especially to understanding the dangers of those long sight lines. I mean, it might have been one of those things where, you know, like I've been saying, they wanted to push out. They wanted to make lead a little bit more uncomfortable so that they can't really retake it. But they end up expending a lot of utility and dribble out one by one, allowing the picks to come through. And uh, such an expensive ultimate doesn't even really get utilized. And now Leet, I mean, one round separates these two teams. They could potentially make it that 6-6 six, six that they were looking for. And I mean, you have instant denial for either side. You have lockdown, you have pit. And while Precision does have the null command, they've got to use that for entry. And that's so committal of it. Again, Leet's just comfortable saying, okay, and then stepping back, letting them get it all out of their, uh, get it all off their chest, and then just running back in, counter-aggressing. Making it an easy 6-6 game, which is not something we see often here. And at the same time, yeah, I was about to say Null Command could be used, but Muiji has been so wow. annoying for the Glazers to try and deal with. Consistently getting value just hanging out by yellow. But meanwhile, look at this. The brain plays underway. Actually, this is the Glazers going all the way over to this A site, trying to bait around the KO to get this res. And they can't time it out, but they can throw the snake bite down and bring precision back down to half. And with the ult now expired, Glazers just have to work on the dry push that they got on A site. Leet again, putting everything into the bucket just to make sure that they can stop what they think is important in that moment. And now that Carr has taken all of this space up mid, it just comes down to hitting your shots. Drone still spots it. Carr knows there's another fight there, and of course he's going to win it. The long shots make it happen, but the spike is still ticking down, and Leet still has to enter. With the help of the lockdown, they much more easily can. How much can you get, Riku? Let's find out. Oh, the Hunter's Fury in reaction. That's a great toss by Zachary. And now Riku feels a lot safer on site. Two down onto Heaven. And so it's a 2v3 that lead us to get done ASAP. And Zachary, I think, still has a Shock Dart in the tank. And Ange, the Lurk as well. The Glazers, they have a lot left. But with the help of the Viper's Pit, Pyro's just going to hold it down. Ange, the spray, and spots the head. But 
They're just gonna stick it. No. Pyro just holds oh on goodness. and gives Leaf a 6-6 tie. <sighs> oh, that is... What a way for that Pretty round sad. to go as well. I mean, I was... I Let me G, excuse me. Had that in the bag there. The fact that they had the numbers available, Son of Car able to find two kills on the back line, make sure that the KO not available, Raze isn't available, and it was just gonna be, a, you know, you see those two agents left. It's Sova as well as Viper, and you're like, there, just line up Larry's. So we can just pop the pit and things will be a little bit easier, but just such an excellent, intelligent play coming in from Momiji. Uses the Viper's pit as a distraction, not even to play inside of it, and it completely confuses Ange there, allowing just for the stick to come through. And just like that, we find ourselves at this 6-6 six, six half. Leet's offense has left a little to be desired, and uh, curious to see how it's going to go this time, because you know, they hopefully will be able to turn things around after that last time they were on Icebox. This is where you prove if uh, if this really works. Momiji, early steps, early counter attack. How much do you commit to this? A lot, says Leet, and none of it works. Spike down, Drone's just gonna waltz remaining. right in, and with the help of Ange, they're able to just completely clear the board. Fireball stands alone, and it's a total shutdown from Glazers to start things out, but again, um, that's what they're looking for as often as possible here. Because otherwise, you are you can do nothing but slow them down until they get to site. Yeah, and on top of that too, like, you know, what are they going to do to prevent people from pushing into them? Molly their own entrance with, maybe? <laughs> like, it, it's so difficult with the agents that they're bringing into this one. And on top of that too, if they are caught by surprise, then the Glazers 100% are going to have an advantage. I mean, even with Son of Card there, trying to frag out as hard as possible, the rest of the team spraying through the bullets, it's just the level of confusion that allows for that disconnect. And, well, the Glazers, I imagine they're going to be pouncing left. on those opportunities every single round they can. Well, finalizing this one, they'll be able to buy in and uh, spread themselves out a little more, mayhaps. Not take as much of a, a gamble on the uh, aggression down that B site. But uh, to be fair, if you're lead, is A all that appetizing most of the time? Like you, I guess you have a, a couple default setups, but I mean, your flank watch is something you have to lean on so hard. And yeah, I like if if you just play from default entrance, I don't know, a lot of entry tools that the Glazers can kind of lean back on just as Leet did. So definitely a little scary, but they'll scope it out and uh, they, they will attempt to at least press this A site first. Yeah, with uh, Car taking that high ground and uh, and Leet just holding on to uh, to pistols more than anything else. I mean, this is very characteristic of Leet's attack. They like to take a lot of space and then might just back things out. They definitely do favor that B side, especially with the barrier orb available, but they might not shy away from the A here. But given the fact that they get spotted out, I wouldn't be surprised if they called for a rotate. Oh, not good. Wow. I mean, hey, hey, these these things happen in uh, follow-ups. <laughs> in life. You know, this is, this is the way life is. But, uh, I mean, they know that there's still at least some presence here. That's just how this team has to work. You kind of have to just keep someone around if there already is. So they will flush out a little more uh, util, but oh. here comes Riku. Hey, guys. Uh, you remember all that flank watch? You can't use any of it anymore. Um, and uh, it's going to be a flawless round 14. And, like, this is this is going to be the biggest problem that I want to see Leet start to try and change up this time around. I mean, obviously, we saw there they're having a lot of difficulty already starting to make their way into the site. Now, imagine that for pretty much every single push that they go, they're going to be heavily relying on getting those gun duels down, finding a couple of picks, and then they're comfortable on going in. One of the things that we said on the last set consistently was they just have to find the first blood and then everything goes their way. But that is a very hard gamble against a team like the Glazers. Who will uh, immediately take the front seat? Drone now wants to get in on the action early on. Let me see if they can find an early peek. We'll hear the noisemakers of Leet, but not see the vision which is uh, a soft rotate with the help of the screen over to B main. Mid is still in Acapado, despite the bonus hold, which is a bit confusing. You'd think that maybe at least one would lurk, but maybe they're just very scared of Ange 
who is watching down B Long with uh, with the help of this marshal. See if you can find one at timing. The knife is gonna ready, confirm. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, love to see it. I hope this Bucky gets kills, Cedric. I hope this Bucky gets yeah. kills. I would love to see this complete arsenal work, but scrolling down the aisle quite a bit. There's the action, and Ange is immediately collapsed onto, as is Riku, as is Precision. It all works out for Lee. Pack mentality will suffice, and Yeji, despite being low, is going to be able to get that spike down with not too much aggression. And the flank watch is there, too. T's crossed, eyes dotted. Leet looks solid in the bonus yet again. It's just Zachary who does not have the best equipment to deal with this and has been found out. Yeah, it's a swarm and a flawless <laughs> round 15. I just want to say, you know, we talk a lot about the flank watch, but the biggest flank watcher on Leet's side is Fireball. And Fireball has been hitting shots today. So much value just on that Killjoy. I mean, obviously, we can talk about Son of Car easy, but Fireball has been very consistent as well, watching the flank, but also to following up, finding themselves obviously in some of those like clutch scenarios just because they are doing the flank watch or they are the ones who are trying to flank around, but still very consistent player on Leet's side. Moving into this next one, it's going to be rifles across the board here. Leet just kind of showcasing what happens when they all group up, but... Once again, they have to find those advantageous positions and they always start things out by at least spreading themselves throughout the map. Make sure that they aren't yielding anything unnecessarily to the Glazers so that they can kind of win out a numbers advantage when they eventually decide to push. They really don't want to let Drone or Ange breathe. Both of their pieces of util are so crucial to the slowdown that Leet is Take kind slow. of drip or drown with. And with the help of that Owl Drone, they'll at least force Ange away. But huge knife. <laughs> That also gives away the fact that Fireball is not there. So Drone is going to take a couple steps back to understanding that there is a very good chance Elite may shift over here. Barbell making sure that Drone does not take that front seat. Nobody's that greedy just yet, including Elite, who are still taking their sweet time and making sure that, again, nobody is trying to get the drop on them. Not just yet, but in Drone hops back to the angle that's been watched by Momiji this whole time. And he finally collapses at the perfect moment. Momiji, the better wall bangs, down to 34 health. But Leet's gonna try and make it work. Do you go for the rush down now, or do you see what else is on your plate? Toxic left. screen to still hold a lot of it back, but they do know Zachary is here. They don't know exactly where. Now they do. Too many in your way, and Mamiji's gonna be the one to get the credit. Now the rest come collapsing in, and it should be a simple cycle, unless Riku can hold it down from on high, which so far, so good. They've got the job done, and as Ange comes careening back over, the question is, which way does Leet look? It looks like they're gonna try and take care of Ange first, Timing has to be perfect and preferably a little quicker. Car is going to go on his own solo mission as Yeji watches from the high ground. The wall bangs can finish. But where, oh, where is son of Car? He spots Ange. Easy first one, but has to hop back up ASAP to get back to Spike. Where is not being held by Riku. Rather, huge headshot. One more to get it done. Riku rushing back to Spike to at least hold to half. Doesn't actually. We'll tap it, and Son of Car is able to swing it. Leet will hold on by a thread and make us tied again. Car clears those. That is, oh man, that was really good. I mean, great idea from Drone there. Unfortunately, you know, just getting stuck in the geometry. Can't quite secure the kill. And then Ange on the flank, which is so deadly, but Son of Car playing that to a T and spots out Riku. Riku has been playing phenomenally this last map and it's been shining, but not against Car. And now, as we kind of go through this, I, I have to comment a little bit once again on Leet's composition because I'm noticing something here. Romiji and Pyro usually lose their lives first because they have to be the ones to enter. And what that means is a lot of those lineups can simply just not happen. And they have to rely a little bit more on that creative gunplay off their Sentinel agents. And uh, that's where things kind of get interesting. It's not the typical icebox where, you know, you plant the spike and then you get the heck out of there and <laughs> rely on these crazy lineups. We're, we're not really seeing that from Lee. I've never seen so much copium be like justifiably huffed by a fan by a fan base than I have with Leeds. Like they lose their <laughs> Viper, they lose their KJ on icebox and they're like, guys, we're chat, we're fine. What are you talking about? <laughs> Car's just going to ace. Just believe. Chill out. Yeah, we chill. Yeah. <laughs> Car gets those. <laughs> yeah. Every single time. Uh, some noise made by Pyro with this recon. And again, an early hold by Ange. Just trying to pick something cheeky oh. with the sheriff. Okay. Well done. 
That's a great start for Glazers, but that's just the signal for the rushdown from Lee to take care of whatever's on site. It's precision for the moment, at least on the front, and we'll spot Mamiji and Yeji on the wide. Lee's timing is for once a little off, but the Gundiff is still there and Kar is still up and kicking, recognizing that at least one is still around. Riku on the flank and Zachary popping out, perfect timing still. Glazers do -si doing, making this quite the justifiable 3v2, even with the Gundiff. Riku finally taken care of and Fireball has had enough. Just the rushdown and Ange, once again, the only one left. Pretty obvious where they are. The snake bite just gonna make it known even more. They don't wanna hide at all. They want to take this fight, but so much now has to be cleared for it, and the, both of the remaining members of lead have ducked back into maps. And this is so interesting. They're going into different positions. You would expect them to play together, and while well, tossing down the utility gives the information away to Ange, at least. Ange is wise for it, looks for it, but Son of Car finds that headshot there. And just like that, Leet, they take the lead for the first time, I think, in this map. And uh, once again, this is their map pick, so you'd hope that they could do that. But four more rounds until they're able to get map number one. It's just some great off angles that they're able to uh, to continue taking. It's just when, when they shift and, and try to play their own game, they look so much better. But that vying for control is, is very difficult when you have to play for your post plant, especially from a deficit, which has come all too often so far. Luckily, though, um, as Glazers are going to sit on one of perhaps the final buys of the uh, of the half, if this all continues to go smoothly, they're going to let that Viper Spit fly out the gate. Riku the op immediately taking down swift judgment on behalf of Pyro. That is a very instrumental kill because I feel like Riku has been such an issue for Elite to be able to deal with. Here. Has been so consistent, at least getting two kills per round, and now that's completely taken out of the equation. You can feel it, Leet. They're more ready to push into this one. The Viper's Pit is on to A, and so they're just moving things in on to B. And they should be able to do this pretty well, at least scooping up that ultimate orb before they decide to engage. Yeah, Leet have always been quite punctual so far. They haven't really had to worry about timing on a macro level. Just comes down to the simple 1Vs, which uh, aren't really a problem when you're planning default. In we go, Edgy, all the help he needs. Mamiji, the wide swing is immediately punished. Now it's Zachary holding the operator and he's gonna get something done with it. Precision, early hold from high ground too. And so the frag back on the exit means that Glazers feel pretty okay with this, but look at this. Choke held by Fireball right in front of the barrier. You peek out of this? Car does with the TDF. And pops drone! That's nuts, dude. And now inside that orb, it's just a done deal. Elite make it easy the rest of the way through. Nobody else drops. And it's 10-8. That is so much confidence to just peek out with the two of the force in hand, especially out of a smoke too, because you know that rifle barrel is going to be giving your position away. But such cheeky plays, nice and close. And you can tell the Glazers, they decide to flood in onto the site and they fall flat onto their face. Leet with an excellent little pick there. And once again, it comes down to these first bloods right off the bat. As soon as Riku goes down, uh, it looks a lot easier for Leet. They feel more confident. And as soon as they feel more confident, they're able to just move onto the site and completely just overwhelm the Glazers. There was a moment there where the Glazers were looking decent. But right now, you know what? I wasn't exp I'm going to be honest, I was not expecting this from Lee. I thought that their attack was going to be a little bit less than what we're seeing right now, and I need to see some adaptation come out from the Glazers. Otherwise, this one is going to be nice and easy for Lee. It seems that Lee can just work off of what they did before. It's it's so funny. We're like we're almost back to the bare bones that both these teams worked with yesterday when they played on Icebox. And it should be said Glazers also have uh, have had their mishaps on Icebox as well. Yesterday, they took a beating from Blinn College. 13-5, uh, I was going to say, I think. Um, and it, it came at the hands of mostly a lackluster attack, but they really could not <laughs> find much momentum anywhere. Um, that also changed when they uh, when they went up against YFP. They took it yeah. to 15-13 or fourteen twelve, one of those, which, by the way, is the exact same score that Lee had against them. <laughs> but so, Sorry, I'd just like to call something out. You know how I talked about the fact that what are you going to do to stop them from pushing into you? Use mm -hmm. volleys? That's literally what we're seeing. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, yeah. aware that those, that is what the lineups <laughs> were. I thought they were trying to clear specific corners, but nope. <laughs> They're just going for the kills. They don't even want to look at them. Yeah, They're disgusting. <laughs>
playing okay, from uh, playing from T still as well. I, I I like this hesitation from lead. It's uh it's it's been used in chunks like on main, but never this far back. And I respect it because right, Glazers, yeah. there's no way they're gonna dip their toes in deeper than they already have. Yeah, and on top of that too, now using the Owl Drone, that's gonna flush Ange back out. Uh, oh, that was actually a really good nice. up there. Uh, gets quite a bit of value, but Leet, they're all together now, and we kind of know what happens here. Fireball will be watching the flank. A lot of ultimates online if It'll necessary, but this should be an easy win for Leet. Hunter Sphere tossed both ways. Ange pops out in the pandemonium, and Kara rises above it all. Attempted to get pinged, but still sitting pretty. As is the rest of Leet, who will toss in the Viper's Pit in tandem as well. And Riku stands alone. Zachary is uh, is gonna have to go the long way, knowing that there's definitely this flank watch from Fireball. Got to just try and find some picks here, and uh, don't know if you're gonna be able to do that even from the wide side. Yeah, Car has got it all locked down. Uh, one shock bolt in the pocket, 100 health. We'll see if uh, Zachary can find one here, launching something into the ether. Maybe seeing if you can grab something from the block. Ooh, cheeky! Nicely okay. done, King. Let's go. Maybe one more. Uh, Mamiji's got to take the front line of this, right? There's no way Kara's going to look for it. No, he's going to dip around. Okay, searching for Fireball. Pops out, finds him. 11-8. Elite, uh, keep it clean, I guess. Uh, it took the pit, but, I mean, I, they want to guarantee it. Yeah, I, I do have to question that pit a little bit, I think. Because at that point, you know, they're up... Four to two, I believe. Uh, they should be able to win that one out, understanding that there's only sheriffs in the hands of their opponents. They do end up using that pit, but I think that this would have been a high impact round to try and use that Viper's pit on. Given the fact that the Glazers will be able to buy up onto this one, if we do see Lee win this round, the Glazers economy is gonna be broken. And at that point, Lee will be at match point and they can just secure the map just like that. So it might've been a little bit too preemptive for my liking, but once again, a round's a round's a round, so you can't really fault them too much on deciding to use that there. Yeah, especially when the cycle's already so good anyway. Like, you should run. They feel pretty comfy regardless. It's a fun lockdown. That's uh, that little toss in early. Just to maybe get some distance and also take this mid. Oh, this is gorgeous space taken by Lee here. Oh, Zachary, bad timing on the shock dart. Is able to avoid the fire and Riku gets the first blood anyway. Drone still waiting in kitchen though. This is so touchy. And Glazers have to play from the back line. Out comes the show stopper. Oh. Drone, instant denial. Spike planted, spotted by Precision. This is just a question of bad timing the entire way through. Yeji can't pop out from the fragment either. Trades across the board and it's a 2v2 to keep Glazers in contention for momentum. Kara ways away, but Mamiji is able to win the 1v1 against Riku. It's not Precision that has to find their revenge and stall away at Spike with 30 seconds on the clock, but with the screen back up, Kara is able to rotate and so is Mamiji. Leet have four rounds of cushioning to work with to clutch up and take Icebox. That should not have happened. That should have been the Glazers round. Wow. That has got to feel bad. On top of that too, I was about to say, Riku does have that lockdown, which I do think that that would have been a good time to use that lockdown, but instead, they just completely get caught off guard by the amount of sharks that have just been swarming around them. And now, just like that, Leap find themselves on map point. Of course, they were the ones who picked this, but I, I'm genuinely surprised at how good this attack has been looking from Leet thus far. Still, though, Hunter's Fury as well. Sorry, not Hunter's Fury. Null Command available for precision to potentially take back a little bit of space with the Blazers. They go for a little bit more of an advanced defensive hold. I wonder if this is going to catch Leet off guard. First flash out from Precision, and it's a triple swing! Four for two! And Precision's just gonna finalize it. Glazer's instant drop off, and it works to a T. And they keep a lot stable. No null command toss, no lockdown toss. That was gorgeous execution. Oh man, I, <laughs> that was perfect. That's why you bring flashes into your squad. <laughs> <laughs> around the corner and then you just go for these dry peaks and you can win out the fights. And that's the thing too. I mean, the Glazers understanding the style of lead a little bit more at that time. Oh, we're going to find one. Well, we're going to find all five of them. So let's just flush them out here before they can advance anything. They need to continue to play a little bit more they cheeky like play. that. If they want play. to be able to turn these rounds around. But Son of Car will have this tour force online. A resurrection available for Yeji as well. Leet, so close to victory on their own map pick. Let's 
Still the cycle intact. Does Car go insano mode here? You can tell he wants to. Lockdown toss proactively. As uh, we'll see a lot get thrown in, including the Owl Drone that will uh, tag Car, who is able to not avoid actually the lockdown brocking. So I'll have to play the waiting game there for a sec. I don't think that's too impactful though. Because uh, leader more focused on taking tube right now with the recon bolt tossed in there though. They'll have to let that go. And Ange Lurk finds Yeji. Amazing that's, timing. That's so key because that forces the hand of Leet. They now have to commit on the safe side and Reek not able to secure it. Instant rush down. Once again, opportunity knocks for a lone moment. One shock dart that'll bring Momiji down, but the spike will still get planted regardless. And Car is locked and loaded with this tour de force for maps and beyond. And with the opening lineup, everyone's gonna pop in here. And with the help of the null command, Car's gonna lose the timing, lose the sniper, and lose his life. Excellent work, excellent chemistry here from Glazer so far, but can they make it work the rest of the way through? Still so much space, they'll have to burn down, and Pyro is still holding this angle. Now it's down to Mamiji, and Drone will take the high ground himself to give Glazers three standing and ten rounds strong. We have a game on our hands. Hey, nice sniper rifle you got there. Would be a shame if someone took it away from you. Right? <laughs> you <decide> to walk <laughs> Oh, yeah, I mean, just perfect timing. Son of Car had such a great angle, but immediately just loses it. And then just the numbers flood in. That easily would have been a collateral if that Tour de Force was still online. And that has got to be a little bit of a tilter for Leet. The Glazers are not done just quite yet. And I'm going to be honest, they took that tactical timeout and they it almost looked like they started to figure it out. Even the fact that leader able to get it that time around, they back up and the Glazers just completely run them down using the raises momentum to be able to take a lot of space, clear out a lot of those angles. And the rest is just history. So close to victory, but the Glazers two rounds away now from being potentially able to force out OT. A very uh, a visual equalization that round and and glazers are starting to feel comfortable at actually going band for band before they were it before they really wanted to make sure that they traded positively and honestly it led to elite getting a lot more of those rushdowns getting a lot more of those holds more effectively but once uh once they've started to kind of let these players walk free as they tend to so well on the attack once you let kind of drone be the long arm of the law once you let Ange be a little silly in the lurks like uh, they look a lot more comfortable they look like uh, they're playing as a team as as the as the team that they want to rather than the team that they have to because they're playing against elite specifically um which means miles for you in the long run especially for morale for comms for for any environment really especially the pro scene which again Leet is one round and one map away from glazers two and one map away from or three rather uh, i mean it is it is anybody's guess who can get to vcl right yeah we we yeah we might have a while actually my apologies oh perfect catch again glazers get the drop and fireball pays the price this time yeah, this is this is where the defense starts to fall apart there. At least Riku's able to find you one more before getting taken mother. down. It's gonna force out the res here. But still, the Glazers, it, it looks better when they play at their own tempo, like you said. Taking the angles, taking the advantages, and trying to catch Leet. However, when they play a little bit more passively, giving the opportunity for Leet to get themselves set up, that's when things start to crumble a little bit. Leet adding a little bit more emphasis onto mid this time. It's a bit unconventional, but the Glazers kind of have it locked down. That at least ready. that alarm bot isn't going to find much information. And actually, they back off, so the yeah. door's going to be wide open. I mean, the second Riku goes down, tube is so open. One toxic orb and Leet have control over wherever they want. This is crazy for Carr, by the way. I'm uh, amazed that he feels this confident just waltzing in with this operator, but he's not going to do the heavy lifting first. It's going to be Luigi. Carr is going to be able to refrag that. Now the Hunter's Fury tossed in. Precision able to watch the other side, and the Barrier Orb will actually trap Son of Carr to an extent. Precision's made it back up all the way to Heaven, too, but Pyro, the refrag from Heaven as well. The only one left, though, and, and Leet gets a little too split. In the, and tossed to the wayside after all of that, Glazers are able to isolate just enough and uh, and make it work. Plus, now they have the showstopper too. The cycle is still there. 
Yeah, 100% it's still there. I mean, that's those are the opportunities that you want to catch lead on. You know they like playing together. Split them up. Make it feel more like a TDM, and then you can start to see how they more or less will collapse. If Son of Car isn't into the equation, then the Glaciers are 100% in the advantage of just kind of winning out those dry gunfights. Precision as well, just kind of doing a bit of fancy footwork, able to stay alive, but... You tilt up onto A site this time, but drone moving up very aggressively. But Mitch is already down. That's so. That's all the smokes of Leak Khan. I mean, this is just shutdown after shutdown from Glazers, but is it enough? It never does feel like it. Precision the refrag again. Now drone bringing out the showstopper to clear house again, and Pyro has to stand alone with the Hunter's Fury. He's gonna let it ride to at least see if he can find any more damage, perhaps a tag onto who may be left, but nothing oh, doing. No. And the Glazers, they look like an album cover right now with all of these different <laughs> ground levels. Drone's gonna be the one to find the pick, the 3K and the overtime mark here on Icebox. Inside. You know, you said exactly oh what God. I was thinking. I'm New like, oh, Weezer wow, album. Like, <laughs> yeah, literally just outlines <laughs> silhouettes of people standing in various locations. Oh, it was perfect. They were ready to pop out at a moment's notice. There were a couple of film just, students I knew who took a picture like that. It looked great. That is such that is such a film student <laughs> picture. <that's, laughs> I'm sorry. Big things coming <laughs> soon. Shh. Yep, yep, yep. You gotta gotta keep an air of mystery. We move in but. silence. <laughs> Oh, Lord, do they wear masks too? I can see masks. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and they and they got like the 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 custom T-shirts on with like a quote <laughs> that they found on like Whisper. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and they're all kind of <laughs> related if you put them all together on a yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they look a they look a little bit similar, but like <laughs> yeah. uncomfortably so. Yeah. All right, we're in OT anyway. Now. Back to back to gaming. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> So, Lee, once again, their defense, it went 6-6, six to six. offense also went 6-6, six to six. but, you know, I think that this is the Glazers right now, they're feeling a little bit more confident in their strategy, they, if you're Lee, you have to really stop this momentum from building up. The Glazers are, once again, ready to move on a moment's notice, and I think that they might have the advantage here, this time playing smart, knowing where Momoji hangs out, able to flush that Viper out, but no engagement yet, oh, drone. Now it's to toss the paint shells out, but uh, that's going to be enough to... Farm Mamiji. This is good. And yeah, easy 1v from Precision here too. The help of the screen, you gotta come out from there. So far, so clean for Glazers. They look locked in. Pyro holding from Snowball, trying to find the cheeky angle. We'll actually do a bit of chip to Zachary here. So Glazers, a tiny bit worse for wear, but now Riku with the Lurk. Car, please, God, watch this. What? Oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> sit down. Cars can't sit down, but this one has to. Zachary now farming the outside angles. Yeji gonna be able to refrag, but has to do so much more to save this round, keep it intact, prevent Glazers from having their first game point on the table on Leeds pick. All of a sudden, this map coming crumbling down. What has happened? Man, I Switching also too, what was that headshot? Match that was point. that was Yeah, give me that Zippo replay pretty video. please. Oh man, okay. Well obviously we're gonna be able to see this. Look. <laughs> But fantastic reflexes. And like I said, the Glazers, they made Lee so uncomfortable in that one. They were getting split up all over the map. Single opportunities. So easy for the Glazers to be able to just capitalize on them. And on top of that, too, you know what's those flashes are really helping out. What can I say? They're clearing a lot of room what? for them just to be able to take the space. And Lee don't have a response for that yet. They have a response for Drone getting up early. Yeah, Drone and Ange just are having their way with this at this point. They'll get a little greedy on the pushback, though, and Carr is going to be able to just take all three of them down. Okay, I maybe I'll maybe I'll come back to church. Maybe I will. <laughs> we'll see if uh, they're able to find anything else here. Precision will take the high ground back. This is pretty honest position by Glazers. Uh, we, we saw this exact same thing come from Leet, so the fact that Leet just want to do the same thing a little bit faster, it's incredibly respectable. Good punish, ultimately, that can lead into them swiping back this round and taking us to double so long as the rest goes smoothly. There's the Tour de Force. I was wondering when we are going to pull that out, especially now that Riku wants to op as well. If he really wants to dance, we can dance. Knife has to get tossed in reaction. So Riku's position on yellow is known with this operator, and so it comes down to precision to have to tap this, and Riku has to hold down the four, but they can't. Car certainly can, though. And there's your ace. I salute you, good sir. We go to double overtime. Here we go. Oh, man. Man, I mean, obviously, they just in general, I feel like there was a lot of momentum being built up by the Glazers, but that time around, they run right into Carr, and Carr was ready for that. A fantastic ace, keeping the momentum back onto the side of Leet, and now Leet are right back into the driver's seat of this matchup.
The Glazers, they've tried a couple of different opportunities, a couple of different stratagems, if you will, to try and throw off their opponent. But you gotta wonder how deep is that playbook gonna be going because at this point, this match is dragging out quite a bit here, Tenrec. Yeah. Both these teams kind of dragging each other, kicking and screaming to whichever site they want to get to. Regardless of who takes this first blood, it is anybody's game. The drone yet again getting up close and personal early on. That seems to be a constant that you can never let go of and you can never deny. Into site we go for free essentially. And so now you just toss in the util instead on the plant. And what a great reaction from Mamiji to spray down precision, get a good amount of chip damage in and make sure that this spike plant has to be even more slowed. Pyro, what a shock dart to finalize. And now Drone has to do even more of the legwork on the front line than he already was. But Spike will still get planted and Glazers can hop back out as Riku takes a bit of a more interesting look this time from window. Fireball watching, but not better. Riku the diff and now we have a 4v4. Yeah, and this is going to be interesting because they have to watch that flank. You can see Leap. Now they're uncomfortable. They're not going to be able to push in together like they usually do. Let's see how this one goes. Immediately in front of the screen, Drone found out, but not taken down until Momiji goes for the wide. Now you may be able to hold Spike once or twice. Ange does have the angle, but not much else. Riku, though, can just pop down himself. Themselves, excuse me, and take four. <laughs> the Glazers, game point number two for them now. But the attack was the, the attack was never really something that wasn't figured out. You know, we hold from the entrance, we we yeah. get the dang thing done, we have our crossfires, blah 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 blah. Can you actually stop this? <laughs> I mean, th th and that's going to really be the question here. And I think that if you're the Glazers, you have to play with a little bit more respect. They were trying to, you know, play like jazz, move things around, see what they can do. <laughs> it didn't quite work out for them the last time around. They got absolutely curb stopped by Son of Car on that initial engagement. And it looks like they're flirting with disaster again. They're moving up here, but they've taken a lot of space. They might be able to catch someone out. And that's going to be huge for them. Spike oh, maybe down, not. B. <laughs> here. Okay. And Riku still wants to go for this? Owl drone is not covered. Oh, but Riku doesn't hit the shot. And say hello to Car. My ult is yep, ready. okay. Beep beep. <laughs> Run it back. We're doing we're doing this again. Give him another give him another one. Pretty please. Yeah. Oh my god, that would be so cool. <laughs> oh, that is twice now that they tried to take that early presence outside of B and immediately just gotten run over by a son of Car, who has the tour to force yet again. And now, yeah, the rotation is going to be coming around. This is a pretty good angle from Precision, but given the fact that they're alone and we know that Leet likes playing together, this is going to be tough. It's a good early hold. Car still avoids the spray. How did he only take one shot from that? That's just such great reaction time. All right, Zachary's going to be the next victim. I, it feels like they really want to hand this to him. Like, that'd be... It over till it's over. <laughs> All right, uh, Zachary's clutched things like this before and has a full kit to do it. Spike planted. First peek out. Oh my God, and Momiji's just going to cover fire. Yeah, give him another one. Are you joking right now? I think that's a 40 bomb now. Yep, holy. Is Son of Car actually Valorant's John Wick? I mean, I can't wait to see those <laughs> videos pop up after this tournament. That's just unbelievable. Two aces to make sure that they are still in this matchup. And Leet, they even it out yet again. And let's see if they're able to squeeze out this round. I do think that when it comes to the Glazers on the attack, Riku has been absolutely pivotal in being so annoying. Able to really make sure that they have a chance at the win, but they're not able to get just across the finish line there. So I need to see the Glazers scoop up this attacking round. It's getting take flight rougher and rougher here for... Uh... For attacking B-Site, it's becoming a lot more fragmented and much more has to get sacrificed early on, which does favor Elite just a little bit more in the long run. Nobody's going to buckle. Nobody from Elite is going to try and apply that early pressure. In fact, no one's even on yellow. Yeah, and Instead. this is the thing I like about how Elite play this defense. They know when they can just slow things down. The Glazers are kind of playing with their food right now, not committing to anything, trying to maybe sell a couple of fakes, allow Riku to take a flank. But Lee, they just kind of dig their heels in. This is not a matchup you want to be if you're Riku. Oh, and Kar's going to hear that drop. Riku just has to win this fight, and okay. they do! Good start. How much does this drag over? Oh, just about everybody. And Ange is next on the chopping block here, waiting to see if Mamiji will turn back around. 
Instead, Leet will just split in twain. Left. Keep one on the tube, watch, keep Fireball back around to Snowman. And Glazers will stick with the B push. With the knife, it should be confirmed. They'll be able to take the wide angle. They'll be able to plant default. But they're still playing so carefully. They don't know how much is still over here. Momiji's gonna get hurt, gonna get hit, gonna be forced, and gonna get killed pretty quickly here. Efficiency is the key, and so far, Glazers have got it down to a science. Drone with this uh, off angle hold as well for the turnaround, the wraparound, excuse me, which I don't even think they can go for. They have to take yellow first. Yeah, Fireball is going to be able to invade, though. Take down Drone at the very least, but Zachary can refrag that. Now it's just about puppy guarding, gatekeeping, etc., etc. And still watching from here, Pyro providing great cover fire. Precision is able to finally take that back down. And now the Hunter's Fury from Zachary. Now you just have to cover that. There is no time here for Yeji, who can at least grab two more. Hey, that's impressive, but... And just got the snake bite on sight and the sight line to kill before the spike even goes boom. And it's a third game point now for Glazers. Yep, and we're back again. All right, let's see if let's go, dog. Another ace. Forty-five, baby, let's go. That's what I want to see. Okay, at this point, if you are the Glazers, understanding how that last defense has kind of gone, I imagine you have to change up the play style just a little bit. And it does seem like that is going to be the case because we are seeing them move over onto that A side. Uh, obviously, that raise being kind of the figurehead at pushing in and leading the charge off of the KO flashes. But this time around, I, I think that it's just going to be the Glazers giving a little bit more wiggle room as Lee actually decide to go more onto A side, which hasn't really been their sight when they attack. But to be fair, the last time we saw them, them on the attack it's just been an ace after ace so you know well they're very scared of the bottlenose that drone can control so easily that's the power that Ray's holds on icebox this is where he feels super comfortable on that defense and uh, now that he's already kind of let go of it he can go back to heaven and force lead to just watch every single one of these angles uh, you have 70 seconds already and the amount of clearing you have to do before you even get on site with this lack of flashing is so not worth it most of the time that's why momiji is still taking a bit of a, a back seat here up the no. aisle and still can't kill Ange. ah that those bullets looked like rubber i'm gonna be honest zachary has the high ground as well this looks like a done deal in, in all honesty but a good uh, war back to uh, to fake him out and at least drive him back downstairs. Toxic screen almost expired and we've taken on the tower, but Glazers still have backsight, still have heaven, still have time, and uh, now they also have a couple members about half health, but back into entry we go. This is where Elite sits strongest. This is where both the teams tend to sit pretty on the post plant, even in the rare occasions where this A-side attack can work. And they have a lot of tools, quite a few mollies to be able to time this out. So the Glazers have to be quick with it. Zachary is going to go for the initial tap, actually hold it to half. Not He's like just going to hold it the whole way through. Are you kidding? Is this how it happens? Yes! Defenders Glazers will make it 16-14. Enough resources to just cap it out. And they will take away Icebox. That is fantastic. Finally, the Glazers, they're like, okay, we don't push out B this time on this defending ground, and we will survive and be able to move in there. And on top of that, too, being able to take out the smoke so early, this is one of the issues with the composition that we did see uh, Leet kind of playing with. It was so much more difficult once they lost some of those key pieces. Obviously, if they're going to be taking the gunfight, you kind of know that Leet are going to come out on top of it, but they take out the smokes. You know, suddenly that one owl drone it just does so much effort at completely shutting down anything that Leap were going to be getting set up. Unfortunately, Carr not able to bring them across the finish line, despite the fact that he did drop a 40 bomb. But wow, if that was map number one, I, I think we're in for a treat for a series. Leet were incredibly impressive, but they were also incredibly committal. The Triple Sentinel experiment is a bust, at least for the rest of today. But what will Leet think of next? They got to think of something that can grab them a win as we'll head to Breeze for map two. Don't go anywhere. The game starts long before the game starts. And warm hands are faster hands. Gain the upper hand and power up your pregame warm up with Zippo hand warmers.
Peace.